Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Um, many thanks uh, to both of y'all uh, for being on this program today and just uh, allowing us to speak about teacher vaccinations and what to look forward to for term three. Uh, if you can just briefly, you know, for our viewing audience, uh, introduce yourselves and just speak briefly about uh, who it is you are and what you do. Uh, Mr. Uh, my, name, my name is Ida Fleming. Uh, I'm the principal of Roots Activity Learning Center. I started out a teacher. I've been there since 1977. And we're here to educate and liberate the minds of our children. That's sure. right. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Tanza Terrell. I'm the lead teacher at Roots Activity Learning Center. I have been teaching here since 2000. I'm parent, teacher, um, and I'm just so grateful to be here. And also, as our principal said, I am here to educate and liberate the minds of our children. I can definitely identify with that. Uh, once again, thank you for coming on the program. Uh, if we could just uh, speak about... Uh, you know, well, at this point, um, have either of y'all been vaccinated? Have you made it down there to Dunbar? And, you know, if so or not, then if not, then why? Uh, no, we are the early childhood program, private. And the vaccination, and we had to open. And we closed on March 16th, but we opened back up in November the 2nd. We have to do in-person teaching although we were doing virtual and successful in that. So the uh, Office of Superintendent of Schools said you must open in person in order to get our funds. So, of course, we opened. Um, now, they're saying that D.C. Public Schools and D.C. Charter School educators are first in line before us. So Tanza Brown submitted all the teachers' information, and they're supposed to get in touch with us. But we're on the bottom of the totem pole, although we're doing in-person right now. We are very essential. Um, because we are early childhood program, we deal with infants up to pre-K-4. So, of course, we have to hold them, touch them, everything. But... We submitted our names and hopefully, no, I haven't gotten a vaccine yet. I'm over 70, so, uh, you know, I haven't gotten a vaccine. I'm still him and the Han. Uh, because of my age, Mama Tanza, we called each other Mama and Bobs, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to uh, address her as Mama Tanza, and um, she's running the school. I'm at home, uh, working from home. So she can give you more insight on how they are um, dealing with the in-person teaching. But you can ask Tanza. Tanza submitted the names downtown and whether the teachers want to get it or not. I'm yep. sitting him, I'm him and a hon, but my sister got hers this morning. Yep. Her first dose. So we'll see. Definitely. And we actually uh, reported on that this week uh, around the campaign for the early childhood educators to be prioritized with the vaccinations. And we're going to do some future reporting as well about uh, the funding structure and about how, you know, because some parents have opted out of sending their children back, that has sort of affected some of the early childhood uh, facilities. Uh, Mama Tanza, uh, if you yes. wouldn't mind speaking about, you know, some of the apprehensions that, you know, some parents might have about sending their children back, you know, just from what you might have heard as an educator. Okay, well, as an educator, and, and I wanted you to speak um, for Roots Active Learning Center, we have the greatest parents in the world. And I just want to say that even from um, March, from closing um, due to COVID, all the way up until now, um, the parents haven't really had any apprehension um, because as the teachers, and one thing that Roots stands for is building relationships with our families. Um, so we've had a close knit communication with our families. And the one thing that we can say that they asked um, when we were doing our surveys, um, when we, um, it was close to the time to reopening is when we were going to reopen, um, the comfortability level that they have a wanting to send their children back because of the close relationship 
that the teachers have with their um their parents are awesome. The parents were um, just if any concern if whether or not how we felt and were we ready. Um, but as a team, great team um, work, we stuck together, um, making sure that the parents were in a loop of everything. Um, our principal, Ida Fleming, made sure that we continue with our PTAs, having virtual PTAs, the consistent ongoing communication with our parents. Um, and as uh, my principal, as Mama um, and Kichi spoke about the virtual, consistently bringing the classroom home and making sure um, that the children um, consistently um, were educated, still having um, the health and safety dynamics, still working on the growth and development. The parents really didn't have any concerns, um, which shows us, um, which shows roots um, when it lets us know that the teachers are doing an awesome job um, with building relationships. But the parents felt more than comfortable when it was time to reopen. Um, the parents knew all the safety measures, everything that was necessary needed to bring their children back. Um, so I, I can speak, I'm so forever grateful to know that they're comfortable um, bringing their children back. Um, so it, it, it's, it's been great. The only um, standpoint or holdback from parents that do have children that are at home that are, are in um, upper grade levels. And so they decided to keep their children home. But for the parents that bring their children, we have awesome parents and they have um, really felt the need to support in bringing their children. Uh, and, ag and again, um, um, a, a lot of them prefer virtual learning, mm -hmm. but the office, I see, said no virtual learning. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did a survey with our parents, you know, for the safety, because a lot of them is in multi, Inter, you know, multi-age um, um, homes. So mm -hmm. we do continue anyway. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Did, uh, I wish we had more time, um, but we, we don't. And, you know, I'm very appreciative for all that you've given us. Uh, hopefully we can come back at some point and talk more about uh, how Roots is um reassuring parents because that's a very interesting thing you know you definitely can be a model for other schools in the city but once again give thanks to both of y'all for your time today you're All welcome thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Robert Collins bye-bye <laughs>Thank you, Sam. That was a, a great interview. I like you. I wanted to hear more, uh, but you know, time certainly does make it difficult. But you, you actually went to Roots and uh, visited and talked to at least. Uh, tell us about. I mean, why did you select Roots uh, to focus on on your story as it related to early childhood education? Uh, that that's a great question. Um, I actually focused on Roots uh, by by way of. Um, the Early Childhood Collaborative in DC, which represents hundreds of the early child care facilities across the city. So Roots is just one of three that I'm in the process of talking to. But since I talked to Roots first, that's pretty much where the focus was. And Roots, like we just heard, has a very established history of working with um, the youth, pretty much molding them into you know the young people that they're gonna be. So I thought that it was a good case study for lack of a better word to explain what was happening around the city and just one more comment about that um, given the fact that um ward four council member janice lewis george was very pivotal in um, advocating for those early childhood education centers it made sense that i would focus on a ward four facility wonderful and i think that's an interesting challenge i'm glad you brought that this, this story up that you know as we talk about vaccines and who and the priorities that the early childhood educators who had to continue to operate in uh, in classrooms were still at the bottom of the totem pole, as they said. That's exactly. that's kind of interesting. Exactly. So, and what is there an effort to to get them higher up on the totem pole? Is there an effort to um, to make sure that they are not uh, forgotten? My understanding is that uh, as of Yesterday, actually, uh, there has been some effort to rectify that. But even with that, you know, we still have um, a gap between the needs, people who need vaccines and the availability of vaccines. So vaccine availability still remains a bigger issue. But there have been efforts to rectify that um, between Aussie and the early childhood educators. Uh, updates, which I am in the process of getting, uh, where a lot of hats as a reporter, I'm actually um, expected to 
send specific questions to Aussie later on today and get my answers. So hopefully I can update you and the rest of the world about that. Wonderful. I appreciate that. And I think we do, you know, our teachers are, are I mean, uh, look, update us though. What, what is the process? Are schools going to open this week? Schools are opening. Term uh, three begins on February 1st. So my understanding that's Monday. Correct. Well, yeah, Monday, February 1st. So schools are going to open and teachers, whether they're vaccinated or not, they are expected to go back. Um, even those who opted to stay for um, in-person learning. And oftentimes, you know, with teachers going back, it's about meeting the demands of parents who are sending their students back. So, you know, um, life threatening circumstances notwithstanding, you know, if you have a pre-existing condition, even if you opted out, depending on the demands of parents who are sending their children back, some teachers will have to go back regardless of whether or not they opted out. But um, as um, Chancellor Farabee told us during a press conference on Tuesday, uh, vaccinations um, is not the end all be all in ensuring the safety of parents and students. So in addition to vaccines, there are also protocols that uh, that 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 each school is following as far as social distancing, um, taking temperatures um, at the entrance of the facilities. Um, keeping maintaining a schedule where students are separated and they have cohorts that are you know um you know there's not a lot of change within them and most and, and just most importantly social distancing but vaccinations while it is a priority as of now it's not the only um protective measure that dcps is implementing wonderful well i'm glad i appreciate the that you're following up on this and i just for to let the viewers know you you yourself have been a classroom teacher. And yes, uh, we, we take a lot of pride in that because, you know, we always say we're the black men in the classroom. And now uh, you are, are, you were there, uh, you still do some work with young people and uh, we are proud of uh, the, the service that you provide in, in improving education, uh, particularly among young black males. Um, yes, so thank you for following up on this story. Yes, ma'am, anytime, anytime. Alrighty.